Let's take a look at three standout players from the Denver Broncos preseason victory over the Dallas Cowboys. Also, we have an injury update on linebacker Jonas Griffith. Hello everyone and welcome to Denver Broncos Syndicate, part of the Sports Syndicate family of channels where we are dedicated to bringing you content about our favorite sports teams. I am your host, Gage Madrid. The Denver Broncos defeated the Dallas Cowboys 17-7 in their preseason opener at Empower Field at Mile High. Even though it's just preseason, it's always good to get that first victory under your belt, especially when it's against a hated rival like the Dallas Cowboys. It was an absolutely gorgeous night at Empower Field at mile high and we even got some rain as we headed into the fourth quarter so a fun night for some football the broncos rested several of their starters last night including quarterback russell wilson but they did end up playing a couple of starters including jonas griffith and albert okuebanam the broncos probably regretted that decision to a certain extent as on just the second play of the game linebacker jonas griffith went down with a dislocated elbow per broncos insider mike cliss it is expected that Griffith will miss four to six weeks, so certainly not ideal, but could be a lot worse considering the optics of the injury. He may miss some regular season time, but hopefully no more than a couple of weeks. Besides Griffith, the only other injury suffered was to rookie safety Delarian Turner Yale, who was pulled from the game and placed in concussion protocol. Although multiple Denver Broncos players stood out in a positive way last night, Lance Sanderson of Mile High Huddle narrowed down his top three players for the evening. Before we jump into that, if you could just help out the channel by leaving a like on this video as well as subscribing and ringing the notification bell, that would be awesome. We are trying to reach a thousand subscribers by the beginning of the regular season and your support really does help push this content out to fellow members of Broncos country. The first player that Sanderson named as an eye-opening performer was one of the unsung heroes of the night and that was sixth round rookie defensive lineman Matt Henningsen. Let's see what Sanderson had to say about the big man. Henningsen was arguably the best player on the field last night and he did a majority of his damage in a role that I didn't see as a great fit for him coming out of Wisconsin. Zero slash one technique nose tackle. While safety PJ Locke gets the attention for reeling in an interception early in the game, Henningsen was massive in forcing the errant throw. His quick first step penetration shooting the A-gap on that play led to a big hit on the quarterback. Henningsen was everywhere Saturday night and played the majority of the contest, constantly flashing in every facet of the defensive line. He held up against the run as a two-gap space eater, Blue plays a part as an interior one-gap penetrator and forced several pressures as a pass rusher. Well done for a down-the-roster defender looking for a roster spot. The next player named is someone who easily stood out to anyone who saw the game last night, and that is edge rusher Baron Browning, who had a fantastic outing in his first game in a new position. Browning started off the game hot with a huge play against the run, showing the stack and shed ability needed to be a quality run defender at the NFL level. Browning followed it up with one of the most ridiculous spin moves you may ever see, setting up the left tackle with a quick jab step to the inside to open the arc up for him to spin around and sack the quarterback. According to Browning after the game, he asked the coaches for more playing time to hone his craft even further and get more comfortable in his new role for the defense. If he believes that he needs to develop more, the Broncos are in pretty good shape. Browning was incredible Saturday night. Finally, Sanderson named undrafted free agent Jalen Virgil as his third standout player of the evening. Although multiple Broncos receivers could make a case for this list, Sanderson ultimately settled on Virgil. While they may have come in the second half of the game, Virgil turned some heads by showing off some deep threat speed on a couple of long receptions from third string quarterback Brett Rippon. The first was an absolute dime down the left sideline in which Virgil flew past the cornerback and made a great catch as he was getting blasted by the safety over the top. Virgil led all Broncos receivers with 83 receiving yards on 
three catches. His action was limited, but it was noteworthy that he kept creating separation down the field. While he may be fighting for a spot on the practice squad rather than the opening 53-man roster, Virgil brings an element that the Broncos need in their offense with that vertical speed to take the top off the defense. Some of my honorable mentions who didn't make this list last night include PJ Locke, who had a nice interception of Cooper Rush on a 4th and 2 play, Josh Johnson, who had a nice rebound after a rough start start, as well as wide receivers Kendall Hinton, Seth Williams, Montrell Washington, and Brandon Johnson, who each displayed dynamic playmaking ability last night. It's good to see some of those in-house options step up at the wide receiver position in wake of the Tim Patrick injury. Players such as Virgil and Johnson have a similar skill set to Tim Patrick, so their likelihood of making the 53-man roster is certainly up there. The Broncos will unfortunately have to make their first round of cuts on Tuesday, August 16th, when they'll have to trim the active roster down from 90 to 85 players. They will then hit the road for their second preseason game against the Buffalo Bills before returning home to face the Minnesota Vikings in their preseason finale. Be sure to keep it right here on Denver Broncos Syndicate for continuing coverage of both the preseason and the regular season. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Gage Madrid NFL for live in-game tweets as well as further Broncos coverage. And for now, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos Syndicate. I am your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out and let's ride.